We begin this hour 18 with breaking news. Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot and Chicago Public Schools CEO Janice Jackson talking right now about the impasse with Chicago Public School teachers who do not want to return to the classroom. The mayor saying minutes ago she's disappointed that no agreement has yet been made between CPS and the Chicago's Teachers Union. They are asking students to stay in remote learning, including those who have returned a few weeks ago. Let's listen in. Within CPS, and we have a body of evidence of other schools here in Chicago that have had some form of in-person learning since September. Dr. Jackson and her team at CPS have done the Lord's work, make no mistake about it, in ensuring our kids and entire school communities are in fact safe. They've worked night and day to successfully develop safe solutions for in-person instruction and finding ways to safely apply it throughout the system. This is the same approach we use to safely reopen our businesses and public spaces across our city. This is the same approach that over 130 schools in Chicago, 2,000 daycares have used to provide safe in-person learning for their students and their families. And in the case of daycares, they have been open since June. This approach is especially urgent when it comes to the education of our kids and the next generation of our city. As I said, I am deeply concerned for them. Education absolutely is the great equalizer. And we see the data. Too many of our kids are falling woefully behind. And as a result, leaving them seriously disadvantaged now and in the future which is a challenge that we will meet, but we need to meet it by providing a pipeline and an opportunity for parents who believe that this is the best option for their family to bring their children back into in-person learning. It's interesting that today, as we are speaking, the CDC put out additional guidelines talking about the precautions that can be taken in schools to keep kids safe and that in-person learning where it can happen, should happen. It's consistent with the new administration's efforts to return students to in-person learning and providing additional supports to make that happen. And I want to say again, as I've said many times before at this and other podiums, I understand and hear the concerns of teachers who are fearful for their health during this pandemic. I do. I understand and I hear you. Just as I understand and hear the concerns and fears of the daycare workers, the factory workers, the healthcare workers, the grocery store and construction and transit and sanitation and other workers whose jobs do not allow them to work remotely and to stay at home, who have to get out there every day to risk and sacrifice so that they can provide for themselves and their families. I hear and see you too. Teachers, of course we want you to be safe. Of course we take your health and safety incredibly seriously. And we have built a plan to make sure that you can get the vaccine. But we need you to work with us. We need to talk to your leadership. Because we can't get there unless we get there together. And we need to get a deal done for our children to provide them with certainty, safety, and stability that in-person learning affords all of them. At this point, I'll turn the podium over to Dr. Jakes. All right, good evening, and thank you, Mayor, for those remarks. Um, I just want to build, start my remarks tonight by building on this concept of equity. Earlier today, I had a chance to meet with parents from the far south side who shared their struggles that their children are facing um, due to being educated during this pandemic. And they shared their concerns and how they made decisions about whether or not they would send their students back to school on February 1st. This is a decision that no parent takes lightly. But we also know that many of our students are struggling as a result of their inability to be educated in an in-person setting. 
the parents that I spoke to today deserve and need options, safe options for their children. And that's why we've been dedicated for months now to put together a comprehensive plan that guarantees the health and safety of our students and also prioritizes safety for our teachers. As an educator and a CPS mom, I am greatly concerned for our students and families that have already dealt with so much adversity. As the mayor noted in her comments, our team has been meeting with CTU for months now trying to reach an agreement, an agreement that prevents the very disruption to learning that many students are going to be facing starting tomorrow due to the union's decision to direct uh, teachers to stay home. Despite meeting over 60 times, we find ourselves in a place where union leadership has determined that the staff and students who have been safely learning together for the past three weeks in our classrooms should suddenly stop. Earlier today, we provided union leadership with a comprehensive proposal which addresses most of the concerns that they have been talking about. The mayor talked about some of these in her remarks, but I'll go a little bit deeper. We have made a commitment to expand surveillance testing and telework accommodations for staff to pri and to prioritize vaccinations in our hardest hit communities. We believe that our latest proposal to the union can serve as a foundation to a deal. Frankly, there is no good reason why we shouldn't have an agreement at this time right now. Under our new proposal, we're also going to increase the amount of rapid COVID testing for school-based employees to twice a month. We will also begin offering free monthly COVID testing for students who attend schools in zip codes with the highest, with the 10 highest zip codes with COVID positivity rates. And when the district begins receiving vaccines directly from the federal government, we will also be prioritizing staff who work in those hardest hit communities. The union has also demanded additional medical and caretaker accommodations for telework, and the district is prepared to offer as many accommodations as possible while also ensuring that we can safely instruct our students and give them the quality education in the classroom environment they deserve. We have also agreed with the union leaders to create district and school level health and safety committees so that we can ensure that the proper mitigation strategies and measures are being implemented consistently and with fidelity across our schools. Finally, we have provided, we have proposed, I'm sorry, clear guidance for when a classroom pod, a school or the district should revert to online learning. Under our proposal, school public health officials Establish the trans have a once they establish that transmission has occurred across three separate pods and contact tracing cannot attribute it to an isolated incident, a school will revert to online learning for 14 days. Should uh, at the district level, in person learning may be suspended if the district's positivity rate reaches 3% as established by our surveillance testing program. Should that occur, a joint CPS-CTU surveillance testing committee will make a recommendation to the CEO and union president to determine if the district should revert to online learning. While we have not reached an agreement yet, we all agree on major health and safety protocols in a number of other areas and still continue to believe that an agreement is close. I am in touch with district leaders across the country, and I can honestly say that our plan goes above and beyond many of the health and safety aspects that I've seen. We have invested over $100 million in things like face coverings, HEPA filters, as well as our testing and contact tracing program. I cannot name many school districts, if any, that have gone above and beyond in the way CPS is planned. We've done this because we know that we can safely operate our schools. Private and parochial schools in Chicago have been operating since the fall, and students in schools have lower rates of COVID-19 transmission than their peers who are not receiving in-person learning. And as the mayor pointed out, just today, the CDC issued new research that makes it crystal clear that schools, cannot, that schools can operate safely even when community transmission is high. Our top priority remains to uh, provide in-class options for students and families that choose to do so. We remain steadfast in our commitment to return to in-person learning on February 1st next week. But as it stands, union leadership has directed pre-K and cluster staff not to uh, report to school tomorrow. And despite um, our, uh, our calls for them to report to work, as expected, as their employer, we have no other choice but to inform parents that they should not bring their children to school to, to ensure their safety. 
As the mayor pointed out, we remain hopeful that we reach an agreement soon, and we also remain steadfast in our commitment to reopen schools next week. We will now take your questions. Thank you. Um, I realize that the vaccine is limited supply, but there are several questions about why can you not reprioritize, come up with a standard protocol, and get the teachers vaccinated? <clears throat> They're getting them vaccinated. I get, I get it. It's smaller suburbs, like Skokie has already vaccinated theirs. Smaller schools have done it, you know, private schools. But I think m many people would say, let the teachers go, top of the line, let them in there. Well, Why is there not a standard so protocol for teachers? We do have a plan for, for vaccinating teachers. And as we said, uh, prioritizing those teachers in, the, in those uh, communities um, that are the, have been the hardest hit uh, by COVID. Um, but in 1B, we also have um, others who have been out there every single day working, putting themselves at risk. And we have to also prioritize those folks as well. I named some of them, the frontline workers, grocery workers, sanitation workers, our librarians, um, a, a whole uh, panoply of other workers that have also been out there every single day throughout the pandemic working. How do we say to those folks, you have to go to the back of the line? We want to prioritize teachers. We will prioritize teachers, but we have to do it in the context of a plan that is data driven and focused on first those areas, those pr workplaces, those jobs that are at highest risk. That is the fair and equitable thing to do. And that's what we're going to do. CTU has reported there have been 60 cases of COVID since January 11th. Is that correct? That number is about right. Can I speak? Go to ahead. You? Sure. Yeah. Um, yes, that number sounds about right. Um, I also want to remind people that we do publish all of our COVID cases online on the CPS website to ensure transparency. But what I would also say about that is we're, we can't guarantee a COVID-free environment. But what we have guaranteed is that we have a strong plan in place that mitigates the spread of COVID. And so what we have planned for is exactly what's happening in our schools. When cases arise, we're able to isolate take pods into quarantine immediately to make sure that COVID is not spreading in our schools. And to date, we have not had to close a single school due to outbreaks of COVID-19. So I think our teachers and our principals that have been operating with children for the past three weeks have been doing exactly what the guidance has said, which is being safe, doing the health screeners, mm -hmm. taking temperatures, uh, paying attention to the testing, and when people are made aware that they have COVID-19, reporting that so that we can isolate people immediately. We have been listening in to Chicago Public Schools CEO CTU. Janice Jackson and Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot talking about how there has not been an agreement yet made between CPS and the teachers union. The aim was to get people back in the classroom, teachers, by tomorrow. That is not happening. The, you heard there from the mayor talking about how they take teachers' health very seriously, but the union is still arguing that the measures they've taken to make classrooms safe have not been enough. We will continue to follow the story and bring you more from that press conference. So you can look for the very latest developments on our website, cbschicago.com. We'll also have a full wrap up tonight on CBS News at 10.